What is up guys? Welcome back to another video and today is a very special day for the channel and for me as a person. Today is the third year anniversary of the introduction of the sport track to the channel. Um, I'm playing over this video right now a clip from the first video it ever appeared in, which was the reveal video, which was crap. And sometimes I wish I could go back and redo it. Um, because I filmed it in portrait out of all things. Uh, this is, I, you could tell I was new to YouTube recording at the time, vlogs. Um, but today is the third year anniversary. And on screen right now, again, the video is just played at this point. But I'm also going to post the picture from the night it happened. And you're probably wondering to yourself, well, why not just do it the day the truck debuted on the channel? Well, I thought it'd be better to do it the day it, purchased. it was purchased because, uh, well, it lined up on a Tuesday, which is my upload schedule. So, fantastic, right? So, I would do this hyper over-edited video if the truck was here, but it's not, as a lot of you guys know, unless you're one of the new subscribers I got over, over the weekend. Um, the truck blew up, essentially, uh, a few, about a month back. Transmission blew out, um, pretty much, for some more information on that. First and second gear, there was no clutch left. They were gone. They were toast. The, the, those gears were gone. Um, so it got completely rebuilt. Um, it returned. And the day it returned, it broke down again on the side of the road and had to get towed. So, what happened? I guess, since this is perfect timing, uh, you guys are going to laugh at me a little bit. So I'm going I'm to say it, and I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to laugh at me out loud or in the comments. Go ahead and type your lol in the comments. Get prepared. The crank sensor is unplugged. Out of all things. Now, granted, it is easily overlooked, as we've seen in the past on this channel, actually. Michael's Jeep. You guys remember my, might remember Michael's WJ Grand Cherokee that was two-wheel drive, had 20s on it too. It literally was like my truck just in a Jeep. It just had what well, was chrome at one point wheels. And it was a lot more plastic than the truck. Um, you know, I'm not trying to dog Michael here. He just used a lot of plastic on that thing. But the Jeep also suffered a similar problem, albeit the Jeep would start back up. Or it would not start back up. The truck would. Um, the crank sensor was... Oh, actually... The, the only difference really is the crank sensor broke on his car, like it failed, and mine's working, it just was unplugged. Um, so we didn't think about it, Michael was convinced it was a PCM problem that it was the fuel pump actually was his first thing, because he turned the key and the fuel pump wasn't prime, which is actually a common thing when the, the crank sensor is broken. So he unplugged it and turned, uh, like about a week later he'd already bought a PCM for it and everything from uh, the junkyard. And he unplugged it, and he unplugged the crank sensor in the fuel pump prime because it didn't do it when he put the PCM in. So he was so mad about that. He, you know, it was a $35 fix for the Jeep, which wound up also bringing the Taurus into the channel uh, thanks to the crank sensor because he was convinced the Jeep was blown up for good. Um, and uh, yeah, the truck suffered its crank plug there's crank sensor plug being unplugged so they plugged back in and it's fine right now um they drove it around a little bit today so if you were in dallas and saw my truck riding around that's why i wasn't driving it don't worry i'm not gonna not do a video on it and not tell you guys um the mechanic was just driving around to make sure it's okay and he's gonna do that tomorrow as well my original plan was to try to pick it up tomorrow morning um but my dad went ahead and told the mechanic just to drive around some more because for some reason, he gave everyone his number instead of mine to talk to. I don't know why. I guess it's because they know I'd annoy them and text them every five minutes. Like, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? So maybe it was smart he did that. Um, I do have to pay $95 for diagnostic fee, which is okay, I guess. I mean, the, I was upset about it at first because I, I was taking it back. I didn't think it was going to be $95. I was expecting like $55, uh, like 60, 50 to 60 bucks. I wasn't expecting like 90 um, especially, I, I was mainly because I was like, I oh, plugged my sensor back in, but, you know, me and mom were talking about a minute ago, you know, mechanics have to go through a lot to diagnose something like that, and it makes sense that it was a little bit more expensive than I thought it was, because they had to, they did fuel pressure tests, they tested the regulator, they tested the module, they tested the pump, they tested everything, and it wasn't doing anything, so they drove it around, and it died, and it finally threw a check engine light. It only took forever because it wasn't throwing codes. And now it did, finally, and sure enough, the crank sensor was unplugged. So they plugged it back in, like I said, and it's been running fine ever since. It hasn't stalled out once. They're gonna drive it some more tomorrow just to, just to double check and make sure everything is good to go. And then I'll pick it up. 
and spend the $95. Again, I, I get why it's $95, but I just hate it because they just plug my sensor in. But again, they went through so many tests and stuff like that to make sure, to try to figure out what was wrong. And, you know, I, I'm counting my blessings where it's due because it could have been way worse. It could have been, you know, an entire motor needing to rebuild. And I'd be screwed because I don't have a $1,500 to $2,000 lying around to rebuild my motor. Um, so eventually it's going to get rebuilt. Just not yet. I just don't have, I just don't plan on it yet. It's running fine. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it pretty much at this point until I, de unless I decide to go bonkers with it down the road. But, um, I guess to just finish off the video, since it is the anniversary of the truck and I don't want to end it on a note of fixing it, but on a st just on a note of reflection, um, do I, do I regret doing the truck build? Not at all. I am really happy it happened. Um, if it weren't for Michael and my mom and dad talking me into doing it, it would have never happened. It'd still be stock today. And I'd probably have traded it by now. I probably would have been like hounding Craigslist offers trying to trade it for a car. But I didn't because I was, you know, convinced. And um, while many people have told me I need to get a real car, that the truck's not a real car, and that car enthusiasts shouldn't drive and explore. Um, you have to think, though, every car enthusiast has their own tastes. And um, as I said in the Why Did I Choose an Explorer Sport Track as my platform months ago, about a month ago maybe, uh, right before the transmission blew out, um, you know, every there's no such definition of a real car person, a real car enthusiast. There is no requirements to doing and There's no requirements. You need to drive stick at least once. You know, it's a cool thing, and it definitely gives you some brownie points with the community, but I don't see it as a necessity to be labeled a car enthusiast. Um, it's just like owning an enthusiast car. A car enthusiast likes cars. They're enthusiasts of cars. There is no definition to being a car enthusiast. So, um, I don't regret it at all. It's, I'm happy with it. It turned out fantastic the way I wanted it to. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and end the video off here because I didn't want to make it very long. Um, Caffeine 19 Vlog 24 will be dropping on Thursday. Uh, Sunday was the second anniversary of my grandmother's death. So yeah, we had a good and a bad anniversary in the same week. My grandmother's death being the bad one, obviously. Uh, and I was not in the right state of mind. I was running on three hours of sleep and, uh, you know, I, it was just mopey on Sunday. Because literally life has kicked my tail the last few weeks. And a lot of, like, personal issues happened. You know, the truck breaking down twice within a month. And, uh... Of course, my grandmother, obviously. I was I was very close with her. So um, that's why Caffeine Not Saint Vlog 24 didn't come out on time. Um, it'll be coming out on Thursday. And I would have came out today, but I wanted to do this video first because it lined up perfect. So uh, anyway, guys, like and subscribe for more. We got a lot more videos coming soon. The Sport Track build will be continuing as soon as it returns. Um, we've got some ideas we're tossing around to doing to it um, with the aid of Michael and his tanning skills. Uh, as well as uh, getting it ready to get prepped for paint. We're going to get all the materials we need to to get it prepped. We're going to go ahead and get a quote on how much it would cost uh, through our family friend um, who has painted several cars that go to BM, actually. Uh, and hopefully, speaking of BM, that'll be firing up soon. Jesus, if you're watching this video, please tell me when the meets are going back. <laughs> um, well, that said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe for more. Like I said, more videos are coming soon. See you guys later. Oh, <laughs>